In this video, we'll tell you the best things you can do in Boston so you can enjoy all things old and new in one of America's oldest municipalities. Did you know that Boston is actually named after a town in Lincolnshire, England? The Puritan settlers were from Boston, England and decided to name their new settlement the same name, probably to remind them of home. Well, their idea worked because Boston and Massachusetts is now the cultural and financial hub of America's New England region. And it's the home of several historical events that shaped the country. Are you ready to soak in the old and new charms of Boston? If so, here are our 10 best things to do in Boston. Make sure you stick around until the end to find out how you can make your visit more efficient and budget-friendly. Welcome to our channel, where we share with you all of the amazing places on this planet to put on your bucket list. If you're new here, we trust you're going to love this video, and if you're a subscriber, thank you for coming back. Without further ado, here we go. Number 1. Spend time in Boston Common and Public Garden Boston Public Garden and Boston Common are two different sites that are actually right next to each other. They have distinctions. Public Garden is America's first public botanical garden, and Boston Common is America's oldest public park. Walking along the public garden will treat you to well-kept and well-organized flowers and trees. If you rent a swan boat from April to September, you can admire the colorful flower arrangements and canopies of exotic trees from the pond waters. The trees are also the perfect place to get shade from the sun during the hot summer months, and during fall, their leaves change into a beautiful autumn shade. Public Garden is also home to two of Boston's most iconic statues, Make Way for Ducklings, a sculpture of a mother duck and her eight ducklings, and a sculpture of George Washington riding a horse. Meanwhile, Boston Common has a long history, especially considering its status as the oldest public park. It was a campground for British troops during the Revolutionary War before becoming a cattle grazing meadow until the 1830s. Today, Boston Common is great for picnicking and people watching while relaxing. You can ice skate on Frog Pond during the winter while the summer treats visitors to Shakespearean plays. Number 2. Walk the Freedom Trail A 2.5 red brick pathway throughout the city, Boston's Freedom Trail brings you to many historic destinations, such as the Boston Massacre site and Paul Revere's house. It begins at Boston Common and ends at Bunker Hill Monument. Along the way, you'll see old churches, meeting houses, museums, and battlegrounds, to name a few. Walking around the Freedom Trail can be as quick or as long as you want it to be, depending on your plan. For example, a casual tour may only take about two hours as you walk past some key locations. On the other hand, taking a self-guided walking tour can take an entire day or more, especially if you spend time going through all the monuments and museums along the way. You can also opt for an official tour from the Freedom Trail Foundation. Their tour, which costs $16 for adults and $8 for children, lasts about two hours. What's more, your guide will dress up in period clothing as they play a historical figure during the American Revolution. Number 3. Explore Rose Kennedy Greenway Located in Boston's downtown area, Rose Kennedy Greenway used to be the site of an overhead highway. Nowadays, the Greenway is filled with blooming flowers and flowing fountains as it hosts several art markets, beer gardens, and food trucks. The Greenway even has sculptures and an excellent merry-go-round. Want the best way to enjoy the city's tastes while keeping spontaneity? Stop by the Greenway on different days to see which food trucks have set up shop at the park. These mobile street food vendors use parks such as Rose Kennedy Greenway to test new concept before adopting them to a brick-and-mortar location. And if you stop by on the weekends, the Greenway Open Market has something for everyone. Then quench your post-shopping thirst by grabbing a pint or two at the Trillium Garden. Number 4. Check out the Maparium You don't have to be a geography nerd to appreciate this quirky attraction. But the Maparium is a must-visit for those who want something unique in Boston. It is located inside the Mary Baker Eddy Library and is a three-story model of the globe. It runs 30 feet in diameter, and you can go across using a glass bridge that runs from one side to another. And because glass does not absorb sound waves, you can hear your voice in full 360-degree surround sound if you stand in the middle. Try whispering something and see everyone listen to it perfectly fine. There's one caveat about the Maparium, however. While the scale and positioning are correct, the map is very outdated. The Maparium's mat hasn't been updated since 1935, so you'll still find places such as Siam and USSR. If you want to find an older version of the globe and see how countries were called back in the day, then the Maparium can fulfill that for you. 
Admission to the Maporium costs $6, and remember that photography is not allowed inside. Hey, if you're enjoying this video so far, please hit that subscribe button for more content like this. It really helps out our small channel, and we appreciate it from the bottom of our hearts. Number 5. Visit Faneuil Hall Marketplace If you're already on the Freedom Trail, then you may as well give Faneuil Hall Marketplace a visit. The Marketplace consists of four buildings, Faneuil Hall, Quincy Market, North Market, and South Market. While all four buildings host various vendors, Faneuil Hall is the oldest and most storied one out of the four. Built in 1742, Faneuil Hall was where Samuel Adams once stood to rally resistance against the British. This is also the site where colonists proclaimed no taxation without representation, and more recently, most abolitionists and suffragists also pleaded their reasoning here. One thing to remember when visiting the marketplace is that the buildings get crowded on weekends. If you want to wander around peacefully, try visiting during the weekday. Number 6. Admire the Boston Public Library You don't always have to read or borrow a book when visiting a public library. In Boston Public Library's case, you can also visit to admire the museum-like Renaissance Revival architecture, its mural, stone lion sculptures, and its 50-foot high arch ceiling. Or you can willingly get lost inside America's second-largest library, second only to the Library of Congress. If that all seems too much to absorb, you can join an informal art and architecture tour by volunteers. Make sure you call ahead of time to find out available tour times. This tour will tell you all about the library's murals, among other things. Just want to relax instead? Grab a book to read or hang around the courtyard's central fountain. And if you're hungry, the library has three eateries on site. Number 7. Boston Tea Party Ships and Museum You can't talk about Boston without mentioning the Boston Tea Party at least once, so why not visit the site of the tea party? You get to interact with Samuel Adams, Abigail Adams, and other sons and daughters of Liberty. And you can also board a replica ship and throw some tea yourself. After your hands-on experience, you'll see a short exhibit summarizing what happened after the tea party and how it helped pave America's future. Once the tour is done, you can enjoy some tea for yourself instead. Five varieties are available, so make sure you buy a cup and try each one at Abigail's Tea Room. Admission for the tour and museum is $32 per person, and the site is open every day from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Number 8. Coolidge Corner Theater If you're unable to sleep or want to watch a movie aside from what's new, then a short hop over to the greater Boston town of Brookline might be in order. That's because you'll find the Coolidge Corner Theater there. Originally built in 1906 as a church, Coolidge Corner Theater didn't become a movie palace until 1933. It was Brookline's first movie theater, and in 1989, it became a nonprofit foundation. Nowadays, you can use the theater's bright neon marquee as a sign of good things to come. Coolidge Corner Theater is always showing a smattering of foreign and independent films, along with midnight showings of cult classics. Whether you want to sink your teeth into something new yet obscure, or revel in the cheesiness and glory of classic movies, Coolidge Corner Theater will have them all for you. Number 9. USS Constitution Boston is oozing with history, so why not visit the world's oldest ship that's still afloat? USS Constitution, also known as Old Ironsides, was commissioned in 1797 and has been floating since. She saw plenty of action during the War of 1812 and has been an actively commissioned Navy ship since. And because it's an active Navy ship, all visitors must present a valid ID before going abroad. All personnel you see are active duty service members, and getting assigned to the Constitution is a special assignment. Every 4th of July, the Constitution's crew take her along the Boston Harbor to maintain her commissioned status. When visiting, remember that the ship and the museum are two different entities. The museum is open daily from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m., and admission fees range from $10 to $15 for adults and $5 to $10 for kids. On the other hand, USS Constitution doesn't have any admission fee but operates on a first-come, first-served basis. All visitors must present a valid ID and are screened before being admitted onto the ship. Number 10. Eat Around North End North End is also known as Boston's Little Italy, one of the city's oldest neighborhoods, and that only means one thing. North End is loaded with restaurants, cafes, and bakeries. Unless you're a seasoned foodie with a good nose for hidden gems, the best way to experience the culinary masterpieces of North End is by joining a food tour. Food tours usually last a few hours, and though they can get quite pricey, 
they're an excellent way to sample good food while learning about the neighborhood. When you've eaten your fill of North End, walk around its streets to admire the old architecture and cobbled road around you. If you're lucky, you might even encounter an Italian feast or one of the traditional processions in the area. Now you might remember us mentioning making your trip to Boston more efficient and budget-friendly earlier. Boston might be a small city, but it's still easy to get lost and overwhelmed if you're not careful. Not to mention that the city is quite expensive even for locals, so you'll quickly run out of money if you're not careful. The best way to organize your Boston trip is to stay in or close to downtown. Now we know what you're thinking, how can you be budget friendly when staying downtown? Here's why. Staying downtown saves you the cost of renting and driving a car. Because of your central location, you can walk or take public transport to your destination. MBTA, Boston's Transit Authority, sells seven-day passes for $22.50, and it's valid for the subway, local bus, and Silver Line. You can even use it on the Charlestown and East Boston Ferry. Compare that price to a rental car plus fuel, parking, and other fees. Next, make sure you plan your dates well in advance and diligently scour aggregator sites such as Booking.com and Trivago. You can also keep checking on Airbnb to see if you can score a cheaper accommodation. Because you'll be downtown, you'll have plenty of options, especially if you check ahead. Lastly, most Boston attractions are interconnected or only a short bus hop away. Freedom Trail, for example, leads you to several sites and attractions along the way. Some of those attractions branch out into more, and the next thing you know, you've spent your entire day checking everything out. Take advantage of their locations to maximize your time while minimizing your movement. Well, for such a small city, Boston sure has no shortage of attractions for history lovers and travel-loving visitors. From excellent food truck choices in Rose Kennedy Greenway to a historic walk along the Freedom Trail, there's always something for everyone regardless of interest. So what do you think about our Boston Guide? Comment below. And if you enjoyed this video, you're definitely going to love this other video from our channel. Be sure to like and subscribe if you want more content like this. If you have other destination suggestions, why don't you tell us below? See you soon, and until then, bon voyage!